Should you become an electrical engineer in 2022? The purpose of this video is to help you figure that out. In this video, we're gonna go over demographics, how much money electrical engineers tend to make, demand, educational requirements, and more. Electrical engineers are experts in designing, creating, and maintaining electrical equipment. Electrical engineers are unique in that they can work in so many different industries. Electrical engineers can work on electrical vehicles, they can work on satellites, they can work on planes, they can work on smartphones, and even power plants. There are so many things that require electricity, such as refrigerators, microwaves, and more. Because of this, electrical engineers are often working on a team of engineers. Given that there's so many smart home devices now and that the Internet of Things ecosystem is growing more and more, electrical engineers will be needed for years to come. One perk of choosing electrical engineering is that electrical engineers, even more so than other engineering fields, tend to report pretty high job satisfaction. According to the Payscale Meaning Survey, 72% of surveyed electrical engineers reported extreme satisfaction or fair satisfaction with their jobs. But Interestingly, only 58% reported that their work makes the world a better place. So kind of interesting that about three out of four electrical engineers report pretty good job satisfaction, but only around one out of every two reports deriving a lot of meaning out of their jobs. As for demographics, usually with engineering fields, about 80 to 90% of engineering workforces are male. Electrical engineering is kind of an extreme case of this. According to labor force statistics from the current population survey, 93% of electrical and electronics engineers identify as male. 10% identify as Hispanic Latino, 75% Caucasian, 19% Asian, and 4% African American. So engineering fields are already male dominated, but this might be one of the most male dominated engineering fields out there. Just something to think about. Demographics and whether you find a lot of meaning out of a certain job are just two things you should consider when choosing a career because many people tend to choose the wrong career. In 2021, a Harris poll found that 47% of older millennials wish they had chosen a different career path. And this is terrible news because the average yearly cost of a public college is now around $36,000 per year. This is why we created Choose the Right Career. There's over 1,000 different occupations to choose from, so we have a program to help you find your ideal career. Your ideal career needs to pay enough, carry your interests, be compatible with your values and personality, and there needs to be demand for it. And in this course, we provide a seven-step process for you to identify your ideal career. Check out the link below for more details. One of the main selling points of going into any engineering field is the fact that you only really need a bachelor's degree to become employed. And this is kind of the same case for electrical engineers. According to the Occupational Information Network, 70% of electrical engineers just have a bachelor's degree, 23% have a master's degree, and 7% other. So just like the other engineering fields, you just need a bachelor's degree to become an electrical engineer. Although to progress as an electrical engineer, you need to get that professional engineering license. Every state has different requirements, but this really sets you apart. It lets you uh, become a manager of other engineers. And when you look through job postings, you do notice that the engineering management positions where you're leading other engineers or signing off on contracts, you really need that professional engineering license. Next up, we have wages. What kind of wage growth have electrical engineers seen over the past couple of years? In 2021, the average base salary for an electrical engineer was $107,890. This makes electrical engineering the seventh highest paying engineering field according to base salary in 2021. And electrical engineers have seen okay wage growth since 2016. In 2016, the average base salary for an electrical engineer was $98,620. This rose to $107,890 in 2021. So between 2020 and 2021, there was about a $1,900 raise across the board on average for electrical engineers, which comes to about a 2% raise. So there's definitely some other engineering fields that are seeing higher wage growth than this, such as like petroleum engineering. I think chemical engineers also saw a lot of wage growth last year, but not terrible. There's definitely other occupations that aren't growing this quickly. There's also a couple hotspots for electrical engineers. In fact, the highest paying place in the country right now for electrical engineers is San Jose, California. The average base salary is around $149,000 for an electrical engineer, which means that total compensation is around $194,000 per year. And this is just for the average electrical engineer in San Jose, California. In the last time they counted, there's around 5,000 employed electrical engineers. So there's definitely certain places in the country where you can earn a lot more as, as an electrical engineer, and you can earn way above the average national base salary. Although keep in mind that California is not a cheap place to live. 
Another hotspot for electrical engineers, and this is also no surprise, this is uh, Seattle, Washington. The average base salary for an electrical engineer was around 124000 per year. This means that average total compensation would be around 162000 per year, and there's around 6,000 employed electrical engineers in Seattle, Washington. So those are two really great places for electrical engineers that earn way above the average national base salary. You have basically Silicon Valley, San Jose, California, and you also have Seattle, Washington. Boeing has a huge presence there. They probably hire a lot of electrical engineers. You also have Amazon, you also have Microsoft. So a lot of opportunity for some very large companies. Next up, we have demand. How much demand is there for electrical engineers in 2022? Now, according to the US government in 2021, there were 186,000 employed electrical engineers. When you tack on electronics engineers on top of them, there's really almost around 200,000 electrical and electronics engineers. So whether you combine them or not, electrical engineering is the fourth largest engineering workforce in the United States behind the big three, civil engineering, industrial engineering, and mechanical engineering. So there's definitely going to be hot spots around the country, but there is plenty of employed electrical engineers all over the United States. It's a big occupation. Not quite as big as software development, but still pretty big. We can also look at the number of employed electrical engineers over time. In the year 2016, there was 183,770 employed electrical engineers. This grew to 186,020 in 2021. Electrical engineers haven't seen their numbers rise that much since 2016. In fact, between 2016 and 2021, there's really been, only been a growth of about 2,250 employed electrical engineers. Now, this doesn't mean that there's low demand for electrical engineers. It just means that the workforce isn't growing that much. Those are two separate things. In fact, U.S. universities only churn out so many electrical engineers every single year. So really, we're going to look at uh, job postings to really look at whether there is demand for electrical engineers. On Glassdoor, I found 25,791 job postings when I searched for electrical engineer in the United States. On Indeed, 53,943 job postings. And on LinkedIn, 47,726 job postings. So when you compare the number of job postings against the number of employed, there is plenty of demand for electrical engineers right now in 2022. And when you go through many of these job postings, you kind of see this similar language. People want to like pigeonhole you, like when you're in undergrad, you're like, you're becoming an electrical engineer, you're becoming a civil engineer. But when you look at job postings, they're open to engineers from many different backgrounds. You'll see language like we're open to electronics engineers, electrical engineers, a computer hardware engineer, or a related field. So a lot of employers are a lot more flexible. You know, they're, they're okay hiring engineers from many different backgrounds. And also the government is actually pretty bullish on the future job prospects of electrical engineers, despite them not seeing too much job growth over the past couple of years. They're actually predicting a 7% increase in electrical engineers over the next 10 years. Finally, we're getting into the personality of electrical engineers. Some people really hate the Myers-Briggs personality assessment. I kind of find it useful. But one thing we can look at is if you do end up taking a Myers-Briggs personality type assessment, you can look at uh, which occupations have a high number of your type and also you can look at which occupations tend to attract your personality type. For electrical engineers, the most common Myers-Briggs personality type is the ISTJ, also known as the inspector. Number two is the ESTJ, also known as the director. And number three is the ENTP, also known as the debater. And for all of the engineering fields, you tend to see these three different types, the ISTJ, the ESTJ, and the ENTP as the most commonly found Myers-Briggs types in different engineering fields. Now we can also look at a different metric. We can look at which type is most likely to become a, an electrical engineer. So a little bit different. There's the most common Myers-Briggs type, but there's also the most likely Myers-Briggs type. So two different things. Now for this, the most likely Myers-Briggs type to become an electrical engineer is the ENTJ, the commander, followed by the INTJ, the mastermind. And number three is the ENTP, again, the debater. And for almost all of the engineering fields, you tend to see those three different types is also the most likely types to become an electrical engineer, the ENTJ, the INTJ, and the ENTP. Hope this video helped you figure out whether electrical engineering is for you. Are you an electrical engineer? Let us know down in the comments below whether you what you enjoy about this particular occupation, what you dislike about this particular occupation. Let us know down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.